Similarly, the concept of current division applies in exactly the same way, or in an analogous way, is a better way to put it, in an analogous way to uh, what we saw when we had two resistances in parallel. So we have this current, I sub S, flowing into a node. Part of that current is going to come down here in, and flow through Z1, and the other part of the current will flow down into Z2, and of course I1 plus I2 must equal I sub S. So we have I1 is equal to I sub S times, so we're talking about the current coming down here, and just as it was in the when we were when we had resistances in series, this current here was proportional to this impedance now. So the larger this impedance the greater the current flowing down here. You can think of it as the more restricted this path is for a current to flow, the more current you'll have over here. So I1 is proportional to Z2, and it is then I1 equals I sub S times Z2 over Z1 plus Z2. And similarly, I2, the current flowing through here is going to be proportional to Z1, or times I sub S times Z1 over Z1 plus Z2. And again, it's a pretty simple exercise to show that I1 plus I2 must equal I sub S. That comes just from Kirchhoff's current law. And again, let's just do an example using I sub S equals that, Z1 and Z2, the same Z1 and Z2 that we were using before. So in this case, I1 is going to equal I sub S, which is... 2e to the j 25 times uh, z2, which is 5 minus j divided by um, the sum z1 plus z2, which is 3 plus j2 plus 5 minus j. And when you do the calculations on that, you get then that I1 is equal to 1.26 e to the j 6.57 degrees. That's I1. And we can do I2 right here. I2 then is equal to I sub S 2 e to the j 25 times Z1, which is... 3 plus J2 over Z1 plus Z2, or 3 plus J2 plus 5 minus J. And you do the calculations on that, and you get that I2 is equal to 0.894 E to the J 57 point, or 51 rather, 0.57. And again, I'll leave it to you to show that I1 plus I2 is equal to I sub S, which was 2E to the J25.